everyday witches emerge from the shadows of secrecy. Broom closets are flinging open and witches are taking flight. Whether you are hiding in your cozy closet or flying with pride, stay for a spell as witch casting with Theodora Pendragon and her guests share magical moments, stir the cauldron and debunk misinformation and misconceptions about paganism, witches and our wonderful world of magic. Here we are for another episode of Witch Casting with Theodore Pendragon. I have a special guest today. His name is Nick Sconia. He's the president of Life Energy Publications and the founder of the Institute for Modern Holistic Alchemy. Welcome, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing great. All right. Thank you for being a guest on my show. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. And I love the name, too, Witch Casting. That's great. Thank you. Tell us about Life Energy Publications. Well, I'll, I'll do my best. It's a, a, an old business. It goes all the way back to the 70s. Uh, so I'll try and do the nickel tour as best I can. Uh, this is my uh, family's business. My mom and dad ran the business. My dad is the uh, pioneer, the... Uh, creator, researcher, and writer initially of uh, the Life Energy Research Foundation and the Life Energy Research books that were all about uh, energetic approaches to living, a holistic approach to living, and the science behind it. And my mom was, uh, when they got together in 1975, she became the, uh, I don't know, the admin, I would say, something like that. You know, she kept the calendar and made sure everything stayed on track. She also put together the Monitor, which was the newsletter for the company. Uh, 1980, uh, there was a big surge after Three Mile Island. Uh, this uh, company was in Philadelphia. In 1980, uh, he put out his uh, main first main book, which was uh, The Threat of the Poison Rain. And it was all about um, how to work with radiation and uh, how to rid your body of unwanted things. So there was a, a juice cocktail, all very nutrition-based at the time, of course. And, and then it evolved a little bit. It got a little bit more involved in the early 80s, where they started to do questionnaires to do evaluations and come up with a chain of numbers that corresponded to organs and glands in the body. Uh, they brought these to clinics and doctors and people that had uh, clients that were that had ailments to see what the outcome would be of these questionnaires. Now, these questionnaires are subjective. The person fills them out to the best of their knowledge of what their issues are, what they're having, and the output is this chain of numbers, which we call the SAF chain. The SAF stands for self-awareness formulas, um, and at the time, I think they also used survival awareness formulas. What these do is kind of track uh, symptoms not just in the present, but all the way back to uh, whatever the earliest uh, chain number is. And it's mapped to different organs and glands in the body. And uh, through the subjective questionnaire, they got great results. And then the clinicians could administer whatever they wanted to off of that chain of numbers. Uh, so that takes us to the 80, 81 time period. 1982, uh, my dad published the Prometheon, which... Uh, he calls the Spiritual Alchemist's Handbook. He says the uh, alchemy split happened and chemistry was created and there's this periodic table of elements for them. He created the Spiritual Alchemist's Handbook, which is a periodic table of pressures. And it's very similar to the periodic table of elements, uh, but with an energetic perspective. And then also in 1982 and into 83... He developed the uh, method of using infrared to detect emotions on the body, uh, infrared scanning, 
And this was accomplished with the uh, Apple IIe computer at the time and a lot of floppy disks. The floppy disks would be there used to interpret the chain that came off of the heat signatures on the person. And then that interpretation would say, you need more celery or you need more, uh, you, know, uh, you know, more pressure on your, uh, on your wrist or something like that. Depending on what the person's uh, clinic uh, did, they had a remedy list based on the chain. So no matter what kind of uh, therapy you did or what kind of clinic you had, there was some form of way to translate the SAF, the self-awareness formulas, uh, to your practice. And there were uh, hundreds, there still are hundreds of uh, floppy disks, which I'm looking for a 2E computer if anybody has one. <laughs> so I can put them in and check them out. <laughs> Uh, then there was also this very elaborate um, infrared reader that went along with it, a, uh, a what we call a gun, an infrared gun, which would read the face. And we have uh, an archaic old video of uh, my dad showing, giving an example of the infrared device and computer uh, from that time period, I, I believe 84. Uh, so then we go into 84, we have uh, more books, Origins of Genetic Behavior which is our currently called junk DNA, and also Project ISIS, not like the uh, the militant group, but or the terrorist group, but the ISIS like the goddess, and that was used because, uh, in his words, she was the uh, first one written about that used energy to heal, and that's basically what the idea behind uh, the SAF program is is to utilize different methods to uh, find equilibrium and find balance, find health. And so I'm almost there. I'm almost at the end of this. No. <laughs> it's a very long story. I'm trying to give the, the quick uh, jot. The, in 86, uh, he came out with uh, Secret of SAF, which is kind of the uh, compilation of all of the work. And in 88, uh, he or 89, he died. He ended up getting cancer and dying and uh, leaving the rest of it to my mom, who uh, took a, a good bit of time to raise the kids of the family, but also kind of compiling and kind of figuring out what to do with uh, thousands, of, of, uh, thousands of case studies and manuscripts and written material from this time period, just mainly the 80s. She, in 1999, put it online. So we had our first presence online in 1999. And then republished the secret of SAF and the Prometheon in 2003, and put her own um, her own her own work into it, which was the SAF Simplified book. And this is a compilation book. It's a very uh, user friendly method to get into SAF and to understand SAF because it's a really large system. It goes with that, you know, it's a universal energy system. So it, you can. Attribute it to chiropractic or herbalism, whatever uh, form uh, or whatever method you use and uh, whatever kind of interpretations or remedies you use, this uh, system works with it. This is a really large juggernaut system. But she compiled it in such a way to uh, make, it, make it make sense for the everyday person versus the clinician and less scientific, more, more approachable. That was in 2004. And she uh, continued to publish, republish books and reformat them so that they're a little less scientific, a little less clinical, uh, a lot on homeopathy and um, a lot of research done with homeopathy is that that, that particular type of remedy is uh, very suited to this type of work, it works on a mental, mental sphere. After... Uh, about 2014, uh, we came out with a new method of infrared reading. The uh, new device is a handheld, fairly inexpensive means of uh, uh, taking temperatures off of the face scan, which is all we have now is the face scan, and then creating a chain of numbers with that. And then also, of course, with the chain of numbers, you get the remedy lists. We have about 30 remedies online on SAF Online now as opposed to like 150 of what there used to be, uh, 30 of the primes. And then uh, in 2019, she effectively retired. She herself just passed away recently, 
and I've taken the reins of the business and I'm looking to uh, move it forward into the third wave of SAF, of Life Energy. And uh, I'm looking to uh, see if there's anybody out there that would like to learn the method of uh, self-awareness formulas to create chains and to interpret them for themselves or for other people. So hopefully that uh, made a lot of sense. (laughs) Have you been wanting to ride your broom like you stole it, rather than hiding in the shadows? Theodora Pendragon is here to help your magic shine, whether you want to show the world your subtle sparkle or you really want to light your fire. Visit Theodora's online store at witchcasting.shop. That's witchcasting.shop. Remember, there's never been a better time to be a witch. The self-awareness formulas sound complicated. Mm -hmm. They are a little bit. It uses a little bit of uh, the language of of the universe, math, and um, it's... There are three kinds. There are a physical issue kind. There is a mental emotional questionnaire. And then there's the Q24. So the SAF 120 is 120 questions based on what you're going through. You approach them with a major complaint. Think of it like tarot cards, very similar in that kind of idea of uh, you have a, a query You kind of embody that issue that you have or that you are feeling and sensing, and then you answer these questions. Uh, The Q24 does it in 24 questions, so you know that it's kind of watered down. It's a little less uh, intense and specific. It's a little bit more of a general general look, but very handy if you're in a rush and you don't want to go through the full uh, questionnaire. And then the uh, Stress 120 is also... uh, 120 questions that will give you a very full chain and a full chain can be six numbers it can be 17 numbers it really depends on uh, the a lot of factors but the math basically creates this chain of numbers that correlates to the different organs and glands and there's 23 organ and gland systems that are used so there is a lot to it and i believe that was always a complaint why are you using numbers And it's because numbers can represent anything you need them to. So in our system, when we do trainings, uh, the first course, level one, life energy level one, is about emotional chains and about trauma and things like that. Really get to where the energy is bound up in the past. Uh, The second level is more physical. Get more into bioenergetics and things like that. Uh, But... We want to make it as approachable as possible, and so therefore most of it is online, as much as we can do online, because then it's less books, less papers all over the place, whereas that's how we did it before. It was all book-oriented, and uh, we still give books out for the uh, course because that's the best way to learn anything and relearn, and you have these resources uh, for a library that some people still have a library, right? <laughs> But yes, they tend to be a little bit convoluted, and that is what the training is for. Uh, We train people to interpret the numbers. And like any language, which these numbers basically represent a language, a representation, you need to learn that language in order to interpret. And so it's like uh, uh, my my example is always going to be tarot cards because that's a really great example for this kind of uh, understanding. You have your – you know what – the magician means and you know what card one means is a magician then you would also know that you know in in saf you would know that your your one your uh your thymus gland is there in that representation it has a meaning number one is thymus so you wouldn't think uh if uh, you wouldn't go somewhere else with it let's say now in level two saf we add on to that physical but initially, we just look to see what kind of uh, uh, emotional, mental things go along with that. So number one being protection or aggression. And so that's basically how we reinterpret and use these numbers to kind of signify a whole lot of different things. Are you saying that we could use this method to self-diagnose? 
Well, and that would go into my disclaimer, which is this is not a diagnostic test. This is kind of like a way to track uh, the method of tracking. Uh, this was designed to answer questions. Uh, it, it may come up with, let's just say it comes up with, uh, you know, diabetes is in your chain. It doesn't mean you have diabetes. It means that you have the symptoms through time that are leading towards this condition of what diabetes is. A lot of what we, we would do is we'd want you to learn about medical terminology and understand what these words mean, what these, uh, what these placements might be. But it isn't diagnostic in that it's going to say, hey, you got diabetes. But when you were eight, uh, did you have uh, a, a lot of dizziness or something of that nature that would be very diabetes-like? And so, no, it doesn't diagnose, um, and diagnosis really means uh, through knowledge. So, in, in a sense, it is a means of getting at something through knowledge, but it's not diagnosis in the medical term of diagnosis. Uh, so, that would be the first disclaimer, is that we don't uh, diagnose, and we also, secondarily, also encourage everybody that has any issues to go to their medical professional or the profession of that issue first. Uh, and then, of course, encourage them to do SAF for you. <laughs> encourage you to go to seek out professional help first, of course. Uh, and it is always great to get your own insights. It's kind of like surfing on the web, but you don't want to rely on that. You want to throw the kitchen sink at something if you have something. And I would say professional is very important. In the beginning of the, of the work, uh, when there was a lot of clinical work being done, the whole idea with SAF was uh, just another form of testing. You would use uh, biofeedback and get responses from that and see how the chain would move the energy in the person, utilizing uh, urinalysis for the same reasons, to see is there anything happening when we utilize SAF, the methods to clear, or is there anything happening in the body? It was a study, a research study on uh, this method and how it will affect the body, uh, whether that be from a, a physical, uh, a mental, emotional, a psychic, or a spiritual way. So it kind of addresses all points of the body, of the self, I should say. Can you highlight a specific publication or research that has had a profound impact on holistic wellness? A uh, current? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm not too sure. Um, a profound impact? on holistic wellness. I mean, so much now is uh, driven towards uh, specific courses, and I've seen a lot of courses and uh, different institutes doing different things. It's hard to say. It depends on – when you say holistic, you're saying the whole self. You're saying the spiritual, mental, emotional, and physical. So a lot of these different uh, methods address one aspect and hope that everything else kind of follows suit. SAF really does try to approach the whole spectrum all in one, all in one fell swoop. But uh, you know, I can I can think of some that will address one area. And do they do other things in doing that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, hypnotherapy is a great method, I think, to work with somebody in a lot of different aspects of their life. And like SAF, there may be offshoots where other things get cleared out, other traumas, other issues, while the person is working with themselves to learn about themselves. There's a lot of similarities to psychology and to uh, hypnotherapy, to SAF, in that a really good way, you can do this by yourself, but it's a really good way to have somebody as a monitor, what we call the monitor, to basically do the interpretation so that the other person can be led through their chain. The ultimate goal is that everybody that's doing SAF is a safent, not a patient, not a client but a safent, somebody that, uh, you know, is working with SAF to improve themselves. So if they're doing a chain or if there's a monitor doing a chain, the natural course is to help that person learn more about themselves. And to know thyself would be the main goal with most of this, to be able to recall as much of your life as possible and to have command over much of your life as well. If there's offshoots of other types of things that happen as a benefit out of that, then it's great. 
And uh, there's definitely a lot of people that are doing uh, similar work. I think NLP uh, would also be another one that's very similar. Uh, hypnotherapy, I think, is a is a great example of something that, that comes to mind, at least off the off the cuff. Many different energy work is being done. Homeopathy, uh, acupuncture, acupressure. Those are great uh, methods. In that SAF kind of blends together the uh, philosophies of the ancient Chinese and the modern Western approaches to science. Um, it's a nice uh, cohesion between the two. And a lot of what SAF does is utilizes uh, personalities of organs and glands uh, to get at the uh, symptoms, you know, the things that are coming up, and then utilizing uh, the knowledge of what you're doing and uh, what kind of reaction you're getting out of that to uh, hopefully clear out some of those things in there that are binding up the energy congealing your energy. Can you share a success story or a case study where life energy publications has played a pivotal role in someone's holistic transformation? There are a ton of, and I'm working on that as a, uh, a new book of just the, uh, the clinical uh, case studies. You know, I've, I've seen people have uh, the aha moment uh, and have issues for them cleared up uh, specifically. Uh, but what it does and, and how it works is what is, makes it very interesting. If you have a huge data bank in your mind about symptomatology, you may have run into some issues with this because you're going to have a preconceived idea as to how one organ and gland relates to another physically from a medical standpoint. Uh, that's not exactly what's going on here. So when working with somebody, and this is going to be as close to an exact case as I can get, and uh, they have, let's say, a pain in their back, a pain in the back, it's a very uh, physical, they have something wrong with their back. Maybe a disc is out, right? I believe the, the, the situation could be a disc. The pain in the back, it's all we know. Now, I can draw lines to say there's, you know, you're lifting wrong, you're doing these different things that might be causing that. If I do a chain, I may, be, I may see that there was some kind of uh, situation where the person uh, felt fear when they were seven years old, fear of moving forward. And now that they have, now they have a pain in their back, the chain says these two are related. So it's for me to educate the safent, me to educate the person that that it's their chain. It's not my chain. I may come up with something completely different, but it's for them to draw the lines between the two, to create a bridge between those two things, to uh, kind of equalize and harmonize that out. The pain in the back caused by a fear of moving forward in the past. And the client comes up with, uh, was moving out of the house at the time, and at the time of, of seven years old, and uh, they pushed against the bush, and the bush pushed on their back. That's what they come up with. And that relates to the present day pain in the back. Has it manifested into a, a uh, slip disc or something like that? That's another story, but their present modern pain in the back is directly related to an event somehow, dynamically, electrically, to this moment in time where they pushed up against the bush and it poked them and uh, they were afraid to be moving out of the house. A f fear of moving forward relates to modern pain in the back. Very interesting. Does it clear? Uh, I think that it does. And that is up to each individual client to know whether or not now that they have the knowledge, the connecting point of that uh, pulse, that... Uh, the pain in the back may go away, but do they still lift incorrectly? Have they changed their habits based on this? These are very important factors as well. That is a case study, but that's my loose way of telling it. <laughs> but there's many, and I'm, I'm going to be putting together a book of compiling as many of the, case, the old case studies as I can. My dad uh, looked at these uh, congealed electrical pulses within a person as something that's trapping and keeping energy. Uh, to themselves and not giving it to the person. 
that they belonged to. And he uh, idealized them as dragons and was uh, very, uh, the terminology in the and his books were based on that kind of idea that the person is learning how to uh, combat and conquer their dragons. And the, the way that a dragon looks is kind of the way that this chain looks, is it kind of zigzags through your life and creates different sparks and different congealed areas where your energy gets trapped. And it's the uh, Safin's life work to go through and see how these things relate and clear this bind, this... Uh, this dragon out of their system. Um, and so the idea for this, uh, this book that I'm coming up with is going to have something to do with the uh, dragon slaying or dragon taming or something like that. And when will your book be out? That one, I hope uh, next year, but we'll see how I have to have a lot of time for that. But uh, I already have the case studies, so it shouldn't be too difficult as long as I can digitize it and put it together. Then there's another book that should be – might take a little longer. I don't know how much of it is actually complete. It's one of his last works, which is uh, The Secrets of Time Travel, and that one will be a really great book. It's kind of a culmination. I think it's going to be a three-part series of books, but uh, it's really loosely put together mostly in my mind right now. It's not so much compiled. I know it was there, – there's transcripts. There's about uh, 18 tapes of him talking the book, so – I have to kind of see how smooth it would be to create a book out of that. You're the president of Life Energy Publications and the founder of the Institute of Modern Holistic Alchemy. Do these two companies work together or are they completely separate? Yeah, they're, they work together. It's basically one and the same. It's the, the Institute is the teaching arm uh, for the uh, publications. So... In trying to create a new uh, a new presence online, I was looking to try and make an all-encompassing one single website, and it makes a really large website. Uh, it felt it was best if I separated the training out so that I could approach just the training in one spot and the uh, publications and resources in another. And so far, that's been a, a fairly good method. Uh, that allowing a lot more liberal space in the training for videos and whatnot, whereas uh, the other site is a little bit more limited on file space. So uh, rather than have them all in one, uh, all in one encompassing thing. But yes, uh, I am in talks with somebody that was uh, at many, many seminars back in the 80s who is kind of embodies SAF. He, he's looking to put together something as far as a course goes. So there may be some... Uh, associated SAF and life energy work uh, in the Institute, but predominantly it is a method for uh, disseminating the information. We have a free course uh, on SAF. It's the uh, intro course. It's kind of a, basically what I went over a little bit more in depth, and I'll be doing a lot of free seminars, uh, one every month, where I kind of go over the history of the SAF and uh, application and theory, I also want to get into as well. Uh, the theory is uh, more of the scientific uh, idea, the physics, the quantum physics behind all this. But the Institute allows me to kind of create courses and develop a system for the student to learn level one online. Uh, and also, if they so desire to become a teacher in SAF, we have a lot of room for that. And a recruiter, somebody that wants to bring in new students. I can do all of that from that platform, which makes it really uh, nice and convenient. And, uh, and then, of course, offer continuing education courses. Uh, my main goal is to disseminate the information, to get as much of it out as possible, and to uh, bring more people to SAF, bring SAF to more people. My dad's uh, goal, one of his goals was uh, to make SAF a household name. And it might be a little difficult because it's a it's a big system. It's very uh, you know complex, a little heady for a lot of people. But uh, I'm going to do my best to do that that exact thing is to bring it as, to as many people as possible. The education at the Institute for Modern Holistic Alchemy. Who is your most typical student? Could it be anyone? Yeah, uh, following my dad's later approach. 
he kind of stopped doing the clinical and wanted to bring it out to more people, uh, to the every, everybody. My mom followed that approach as well, but with the uh, simplified book, making it really, really approachable, less, uh, less of a classic written way and more of a simplified writing way. And uh, the training as well is kind of opened up so that you didn't have to be a specific clinic or a practitioner of another um, avenue. I'm, uh, I'm in that camp. I think that in there should be two different methods, one that's clinical and one that's personal. So if you want to use it just for yourself, you don't plan on having clients, you don't have any clients, you're not looking at it, you're looking for self-discovery. Uh, I'm working on a course specifically for that. I'm currently, we're still using the, what would I call now the clinical course, which is a full course. You get everything with it, with the infrared and everything like that. The infrared's a little difficult to use by yourself, uh, whereas with somebody else, if you had a client, that's when you use the infrared. Anybody can do it. Our system is, because of the SAF Simplified book, it's exceptionally approachable. And uh, the SAF Simplified is one of our level one books. So if you already have it, or if you do get it uh, and you read it, it will teach you how to read the chains and read the numbers. We've moved everything online to make it really easy for paperwork and for uh, uh, just uh, the interpretations are online and all the infrared is online. Uh, none of that is in a book, but... But uh, you can learn quite a bit about the chains through the simplified book if you just have the book. Uh, that was the goal then, and that still is the goal. Our certificate course, when you get trained to be a practitioner, you learn how to read. You get three hours one-on-one -on -one with another uh, practitioner. Uh, so you can see how somebody else reads a chain because a lot of it's just you, know, you read it and you're like, well, what does that mean exactly? It's very straightforward because the monitor is really just utilizing the chain as a sentence and delivering that sentence to the 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 safent, the person getting the chain, uh, getting the interpretation. So it's very straightforward. It's not very difficult. It's just knowing all the numbers and what they mean and, and get, getting really used to the language, basically. Um, but yes, anybody can do it, and ha and many have, and the, my goal is, would be to just increase that as much as possible. There was a little lull of time where the marketing and uh, output kind of slowed in 2015. So I'm kind of trying to revamp what we were doing prior to 2015, which was to bring in more people to the, uh, you know, to the community and, um, and, and get more people kind of associating numbers with organs and gland systems and learning about themselves and finding out more about themselves through this really, really interesting method. Listening to you, it sounds like it could be complicated. It's probably the way I'm talking. <laughs> is it simpler than it sounds? Yeah, I think it is. It seems like a lot. And I think it, I listened to about 80 hours worth of seminars that my dad did back in the 80s. And I listened to him for six months because I, I had the same issue. I just don't get it. I don't understand how I can market it. How do, who do I even approach with this? What's the goal? All that kind of stuff. I just I needed a clear, concise idea, and I couldn't get one because it's just too broad spectrum. Uh, after listening to it, I really after listening to hours and hours and hours of uh, seminars, I, I really understood what the goals were of the system specifically, and then all these other extra things can happen. But um, the specific goals of know thyself, self discovery, and then of course. Um, you know, manifestation and things like that that come out of it. But it seems complex. It seemed complex to me trying to look at it from a, an admin perspective. Some people pick up on it real easy because they understand what was going on. And I think there's more people of a more understanding, open-minded perspective now than there were in the 80s. Um, the 80s were a different time. And the seminars, listening to them, you can tell my dad was really like, Subjects that have definitely come up many, many times since in movies and in p people's conversations, likely, maybe, depending on your company. You know, he was trying to deliver this to people that were, you know, doctors and some everyday people as well, but many people that were working with medical terminology and clinics and, you know, saying, you know, do you think you can walk through that wall? You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> 
So, you know, the subjects were a little overwhelming back then. I think it's really understood now that there can be a representation of energy and energy signatures in the body. There's a, gr a greater understanding that DNA does uh, dictate a lot of our lives in the beginning and continually throughout it. And electromagnetics. Now, maybe that's just my feed on, on social media. I see a lot of it and I think, oh, there's, you know, a lot of people are just, you know, touching, touching the subject from this angle or that angle. Uh, the beauty of the SAF system is it kind of encompasses as much of that already as possible. So if you really want to learn uh, the, the knowledge of life energy, the science of life energy, uh, that is basically what we teach is this, what I consider like a, a primer. You want to get into the life energy and mapping the, the self, uh, this is a great method to do it. You just have to have, you got to learn the language a little bit. And so we say modern alchemy because this is a, a method of transformation. Uh, when you learn about yourself, you dynamically free energy that was stuck behind veils or stuck behind walls, controlling and dictating your future as if it has that kind of control. Uh, we make it uh, our job to go back and open those doors and allow that energy to be uh, corrected, realigned, and the energy to be brought forward to the present. And that's also what's meant by the time travels that we go back into ourselves. We delve into those things. And it is considered, I guess, uh, shadow work in, to some regard for a lot of people because those are usually those, those trappings, what I call, uh, I utilize the uh, terminology that a lot of people get, the horcrux. You know, we've sometimes ourselves will create these horcruxes, these congealed zones of energy and sometimes that happens to us from the environment and uh, it's kind of our job to go back there and wrestle with them and open them up and bring them forward with a clear understanding of uh, you know who's in control basically so yeah it still sounds maybe a little convoluted but it, but it really isn't it's pretty simple when we do the training we really focus on three numbers out of a chain it can be 17 numbers we focus on three and uh, just to open you up to how to clear a chain, we work on three numbers, so it really simplifies it. Uh, there are ways to get more advanced and to delve in further. Initially, it's three numbers, and that's the uh, lead core anchor of the chain. Uh, those are the points that we really look at to, to kind of free that energy and, and move forward. And then write another chain and see how things are moving. A chain a day is a good good practice. Much like, again, you pull a card a day or something like that with tarot. <laughs> uh, you do a chain a day, it gives you an insight into yourself and a method. There's a method to an action to take, which I think is really important that you don't get with a lot of uh, other systems. So what do I do now? You know, here it is. Here's this thing in the past. What do I, how do I get rid of it? <laughs> And this is physically, mentally, and emotionally. And psychically and uh, spiritually. Yeah, it approaches all different aspects. And it, it's, it acts as a track, as a tracking mechanism to track yourself, to find yourself on a scale and see if you're going up or down, to uh, ability to kind of see your progress. And the goal is progress. Uh, my dad's design was uh, one to a thousand steps. And uh, or zero, excuse me, zero to a thousand steps. You can be zero, <laughs> but not actually, not if you're alive. But uh, a th at a thousand was uh, Ubermensch, or in modern terms, Superman. At the top was Superman, right? This uh, for him, it was the emblem of everything you'd want to be, impervious to everything, um, and a really, really hard goal. You know, something that's really at the top. I'm kind of superimposing on that. Uh, like the hero's journey, that uh, you're looking for your inner hero. Uh, and uh, as he said, with Superman, your goal is to move up the chain, up the ladder, and to progress out of these shadow realms and into the light. How can the listeners find you if they're interested in learning about this? Well, we do have lifeenergypublications.com. And uh, that is uh, basically a hub for 
many different directions depending on what you want to do. You can buy the books there. You can buy the training there as well, but I do prefer you go to the uh, SAF online section, which is at modernholisticalchemy.com. It's also available. You just go to Life Energy Publications and you can go to all these different places. Uh, if you want to just dip in and see you know, what I'm talking about and get some ideas on YouTube, at SAF Training is our YouTube channel. I should be putting more up there than I do. I also do a podcast, so I get a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of things, a lot of irons in the fire. But um, we'll be putting another seminar up soon on SAF training on YouTube, and uh, there are some audio. There's a, a a video that I think I put up sometime this year. I put up one from Denver, one of the seminars that goes over the nitty gritty of the infrared at that point in time. Uh, but uh, lifeenergypublications.com, also Facebook uh, as you know, backslash Life Energy Publications, and on Instagram at Life Energy Research. Tell us about your podcast. Well, the podcast initially was a way for me to uh, put out information related to SAF. Uh, like I said uh, in the beginning, there the uh, newsletter was called the Monitor. So the podcast is called The Holistic Monitor. Now, initially, it was going to be a uh, an arm of SAF and Life Energy Publications, uh, putting out information, solely these seminars and these different uh, you know books and whatnot in a, in a format podcast type format. But I found that there was a lot a lot of requirements to fill the time and a lot of prep, and I wanted to do a weekly show. So at the beginning of 2023, in February, I started just doing interviews. And uh, so it's interviews in a holistic, spiritual philosophy, you know, different uh, practitioners doing different things in the world. And it's been a really cool experience. I've had a lot of fun with it. Uh, I still put out a little bit of SAF information here and there, but it is a weekly out on Thursdays at nine o'clock. And uh, it definitely keeps me on my toes, that's for sure. But a lot of fun getting to meet so many people doing different things and really running into other practitioners that are doing things that are uh, akin to or similar to SAF work. It's really uh, it's really kind of cool to see how many branches are out there now doing things that are very similar. That is neat. And you learn a lot from your guests. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's helped me as well, uh, I hope. Being a guest, because <laughs> you're my first uh, show since since uh, two years ago, I guess, almost two years ago. Really? So you haven't been a guest in a I while? I think I have. Yeah, it's been a while. What to think? Maybe a year and a half, something like that. And the show was for me. My podcast was like, well, I got to get more comfortable speaking and looking at a camera and talking. So that's uh, it. Seemed to have worked. I feel very comfortable. So that's great. And maybe it's just the great, That's great. The great host. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put all your links in the episode notes. I appreciate it. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the listeners before we sign off? Well, I really uh, appreciate being on the show and having me here. And uh, I am here. If anybody has any questions, I'm available at lifeenergypublications.com. They can always contact me uh, through there if they have any questions on the system or uh, would like to be on the show or whatever. I'm uh, an open book. You made a few references to the tarot cards. Do you read the tarot cards yourself? Well, I studied uh, tarot for a while. I I do, but uh, rare that I look or broadcast or, or forecast uh, out. I mostly utilize them to do self-journeying and self-work. Uh, I was really into pulling a card a day to kind of see like, how's my day look or whatever. But um, it's also good to kind of study them and learn about the process of consciousness. So yeah, I, I did. I did a lot of study through Boda, which is uh, Builders of the Adenum. A very, uh, I think it was maybe a hundred years ago or something like that. Uh, kind of a Golden Dawn style uh, tarot uh, organization that uh, studies the cards for their symbological references and how we can glean aspects of ourself through that. 
I will occasionally pull one to see like, what am I supposed to do here or whatever. But for a long time, I did study them specifically on just uh, to learn about the self. Yeah, I love the cards. They're great. Well, thank you for being on the show, Nick. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. This has been great. You're welcome. During January 2024, Nick is offering a 30% discount. So if you're interested, take advantage of this nice offer. Thank you for joining us for Witch Casting with Theodora Pendragon. Have a burning question or have a topic you'd love Theodora and her guests to discuss on the show? Contact her through Instagram at Theodora Pendragon. If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And help us spread the word by leaving us a rating and review and sharing it with your friends. See you next time and may your magic always shine. Thank you.